Hey ladies, how's it going? So today I'm going to show you how to move on to the next step of your charcoal form drawing. So we started out, um, just to give you a little bit of a review of what we've done so far, we started out by um, taking a look at our reference photo here and then getting a feel for where these objects are on the page, on the composition. How do they relate to each other? You know, looking closely at how close do things come together and then trying to space them out accordingly. So before you move on to the next step, it's really important that you make sure that all of your proportions look good. So, you know, if I gave you some teacher feedback, make sure that you are checking that um, before you move on. The nice thing about charcoal is that it moves around easily if you need it to move around, especially in these early stages when you're just using your vine charcoal, the really skinny little pieces like these. So if you need to move something, whether it be like a really large object or just a really small area, all you gotta do is smudge it away first. I recommend smudging it out first before you go in with your eraser. And then if you have a really, really large thing that you need to get rid of, like let's say, for instance, that I needed to completely move the sphere, it was just in the wrong spot. Take a tissue and just completely smudge it away first and look how fast that disappears. Then you can go in with your eraser and start to get some of those things out. So charcoal, um, one reason why I love it as a art medium, as an art material, is that it's just so easy to move. I know it can feel frustrating sometimes because you don't want things to move. Once you put something down, it might seem like it's really easy to mess it up, but it's easy to kind of put it back in the wrong spot. Like you might smudge it, it might end up in the wrong spot, but that's kind of the trade-off of charcoal. It's easy to fix things. And it's important to make sure that you're keeping your hand that's not drawing off of the charcoal so that you're not picking up charcoal on your fingers and putting it in spots that you don't want. But hey, if you do by accident, it's okay. It comes off easily. So what we did last class was um, we just did the basic contour lines, those basic outlines with the interior details for all of our shapes. And then we very, very roughly just for the sketching portion, started to block in some of our shadows. Now remember, this here is our core shadow. Think about core, like um, when you're working your core of your body when you're exercising. That's part of your body and it's part of the form here. This down here is the cast shadow. The shadows that are being casted by the objects. They're kind of, um, you can think of casting a net when you're going fishing, you kind of throw it out into the world. That's what these shadows are doing. They're being thrown out from your objects. And remember, ladies, you can always add more charcoal. Start out light. It's okay to start a little bit lighter and cautious. Work your way up to darker values. So here I'm just laying in some of those basic shadows that I'm seeing. Not going too crazy just yet. We have plenty of time today to go crazy. But you want to make sure that all of your basic, sketchy shadows are in there first. Make sure you leave room for mid-tone areas up here. Not quite the darkest shadows, so you want to keep those lighter. And then your reflected light under here. Just blend everything out. Try different motions with your fingers. Sometimes little taps are good for getting in those harder to reach spots. Okay, now the next thing that we want to do here is we want to start building up some background values. Now if you have things in your reference photo like posters in the background, um, you can see just different things in the background, don't worry about including details for those things. You don't need to worry about that. Just worry about the value changes that you see. See how it gets a little bit darker up here, it's a little darker around here in these corners. I like to lay my vine charcoal, still using vine charcoal here. I like to lay it flat and just kind of pull it along wherever I think those values should go. Remember, you can always add more. I'm just gonna start with a light layer, see how it turns out. Then I will add more if I need to. Seeing a pretty big shadow over here on this side. I'm not going to worry about details, just values. 
Now the thing about this side of this cone and the top of this box is that they are very, very light. We want to make sure that these are the lightest areas where we see those highlights and really light midtones. We want to make sure that those look like the lightest spots. So sometimes what can be helpful is to put a little bit of vine charcoal in the background to help those areas stand out. See how that stands out now than it did before. Just putting a little tiny bit of vine charcoal, not going too dark, just a little bit to create a nice light mid-tone. Then you can start going in here and blending out. Sometimes it can be helpful to stand up while you're doing this too. You can kind of get a better, better control over your arm motions. Gonna stand up, blend these things out just a little bit. You're still in your discovery phase of being an artist. You know, you don't quite know 100% what works for you or not. I didn't really learn 100% what worked for me until I got to college, my later years. So it's okay if you try new things. There's no hard and fast way that you gotta blend this charcoal. No position that you have to stand or sit in. Try things out. That is A-OK. -okay. Starting to build up some values here in the background. Make sure your hands aren't going over top of the charcoal. This hand, rather, whatever your non-dominant hand is. And you can kind of blur the edges of your cast shadows just a little bit. You know, look at where you see some more values. It's okay if they go up and touch some of those cast shadows. You can always push it around if it's not quite the right spot. I'm gonna keep building some more value down here. It's okay if you go over your border as long as you clean it up afterward. Try to keep that border nice and clean. So that way, when I mat your artwork to hang it up, I don't have to get a bunch of charcoal all over the mat. Keep going in here. See, I'm still holding my vine charcoal on its side, not holding it like a pencil, laying it down flat and then pushing it. And that way I don't get too much charcoal in one spot. Notice how I'm not going too dark. You don't wanna really push charcoal into the paper too hard, especially if you're not quite sure yet whether you have the right amount. You're always at work. So this still kind of counts as like a sketching portion of your charcoal drawing. We're not adding compressed or white just yet. We will do that in this video, but I'm still just building up the basic, um, I like to kind of call it an underdrawing. It's sort of a roadmap to tell you where do I need to put my compressed charcoal. I'm going, adding in a little bit more here, holding it like a pencil. Still not pressing too hard. I'm barely, barely touching that paper. So if I put it on my hand, it barely comes off. Barely, barely touching the paper. Building up some of those darker values. You're not gonna get as dark as you will get with this vine charcoal. Remember that compressed charcoal is much, much darker. So don't try to get those really, really dark values that you're seeing just yet. You know, try to lay out where they go and start to build up some of those darker values, but in your vine charcoal phase, it's not gonna be perfect just yet. Okay, I'm almost happy with where this is. I just wanna add in a little tiny bit more. I'm gonna darken this up just a little bit side of my cone because look at how dark that side is compared to the negative space in the background. We want that negative space to stand out. Get that value contrast that we're looking for, making it really striking, really dramatic. Okay. I'm pretty much happy here. 
can be easy to get kind of lost in this process here and just keep adding more and more, which is okay. Let yourself have fun. Enjoy the process. You can always wash your hands off. It's okay to get a little bit messy. pretty much into a stopping point here, just add a little tiny bit more. Okay, so we've got our basic background values now. Pretty good start. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put my vine charcoal to the side for the moment, and I'm going to take out my white charcoal. Get your white charcoal out. What you want to do now is you want to look at your reference photo and figure out where those bright areas are. Where are those lighter values? Now, the nice thing about the white charcoal is that it will work with your vine charcoal. You'll be blending it together, and the white charcoal will mix with the vine and create some nice grays. Now, ladies, you only want to put this where you see those lightest values. Okay, I've got one right here on the top of this box here. Um, on the side of my cone, and then right here, I've got this nice highlight. And there's a little bit over here, too. Now, one thing you can do, but you've got to be very gentle if you do this. I'm going to move my camera down a little bit here. One thing that you can do, if you choose, is to take your white charcoal pencil. Now, you've got to make sure that you use this very, very lightly. Don't press too hard. One thing you can do is draw the shapes of the highlights very, very lightly. So I've got my really bright highlight. I'm not sure if you can see it too well because of the lighting here. It's right here, that really bright highlight. Now again, you only want to do this if you're sure that your proportions are correct because this is the point where you're getting deep into it. I've got a white highlight there. I've got one on top of my cone. Now, there's a little dark spot in there. I'm going to go back and add that in later, so I'm not going to worry about it too much right now. We will have time to go and clean things up later. I'm going to get the side of my cone. Now, it only is light up to this point right here, so I'm not going to go down too far. And we're going to very, very lightly draw the outline of that highlight. Now, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to draw that negative space in there where I see that light highlight. And then over here, it gets pretty light over on this side, so I'm just going to kind of mark off where does that lightness start. The white pencil is great for cleaning up edges and things like that. That's not really what we're doing right now. I'm just outlining where my highlights are. They're going to get pretty messy, but we will go back in with this pencil again and clean them up. What I'm going to do now is take my white, lay it on its side. You want to check to make sure that your, your white charcoal isn't too dirty. If it is, take your tissue and just wipe off the sides of it. Not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Charcoal is very easy to move around and fix things up. Remember, don't press too hard or else you're going to get a lot of this dust. Lay some of that in. I'm going to go over here to my sphere and just go over that circle that I have. I'm going to go in here into this negative space and just kind of start to fill some of that in, not pressing too hard. Just a little bit of pressure. Come over here, lighten this up a little bit. Lay it on its side for big areas like this. Get a lot more done faster. I'm going to go over here onto the side of my cone and just fill in that shape. Okay. Now we can go in here with our finger. Try to make sure that your hands are as clean as possible. You don't have to necessarily wash them. Just give them a little bit of a wipe on your tissue. Now we can go in here and start to very, very lightly blend some things. Just so that's not streaky. Remember, 
Remember, your outlines might get kind of messy here. That's okay. Those edges might not be so sharp. That's okay. We're going to go back in there and fix things up. fade out those edges. See, I didn't put a lot of white over here on this side. I'm just kind of taking it and pulling it in the direction that it needs to go. Kind of following along with the contours of the surface that the objects are resting on. Going around my forms, or my implied forms, rather. This is just a 2D drawing. Blend things out. Okay. Pretty good start. A little bit lighter than it was before. So we've got our white charcoal in here now. Now I'm going to actually go back in with my vine charcoal and actually kind of push into that white just a little tiny bit. I'm noticing that some areas need to be just a little bit darker. You're kind of going to be doing this push and pull thing with your white and your vine for a little bit before you move on. Until you've got some nice highlights and some nice midtones. I'm going to go in here with this empty paper over here and kind of blend that a little bit. I don't want anything to be empty. It's okay if you have a few little empty areas. You're kind of letting the gray of that paper show through. But you don't want it to be a lot. I'm going to go over here around my highlight, because my highlight's supposed to just be this little small area. About, it's about that size. So everything around that highlight needs to be darker. There we go. I'm going to go back here, cover up this kind of messy edge I created here. It's okay if your background values kind of blend into your cast shadows a little bit here. We will go back in with compressed charcoal and really define those cast shadows. But not at the moment. One step at a time. in here, kind of make a nice little dark area next to that highlight so it really pops out. You see that value contrast happening there? It's beautiful. There's one little thing that I forgot to do here, and that is to lighten up that reflected light on the bottom of my sphere just a little teeny tiny bit, not a lot, just a little tiny bit. Remember that light is bouncing off of this surface onto the bottom of that sphere. Let's just lighten that up slightly. And there's a little bit over here as well on the bottom of my cone, just a little tiny bit. Don't go crazy. Okay. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead, let's go ahead into our charcoal pencil, the black one, this guy right here. So now we're in the phase where we can start kind of sharpening some things up a little bit and deepening those values. So I really want you to pay attention, ladies, to what qualities of shadows that you have. Are, you, are your shadows really crisp and sharp on the edges or are they kind of fuzzy? Look for those things. If your shadow is very crisp, you can go in there with your compressed charcoal pencil and lightly, lightly, barely touching it, start to define the edge of that shadow just a little bit. Now I'm just doing this a tiny, tiny bit. Do not press too hard or else you're going to get a weirdly outlined shadow. Your shadow should not have an outline. What we're doing right now is just kind of defining where the edges of that shadow is going to be then you're going to go in there with your 
compressed charcoal block and start to lightly, lightly fill in that shape. Those outlines that we just drew are to help us figure out how far out do we need to put this compressed charcoal. And I like to work in little circles here. I'm not pressing too hard, I'm not going back and forth. Little circles will help you distribute the charcoal more evenly and not put too much right away. So I've got that there. And just to show you how this works, we go in there with our finger and just blend a little tiny bit. Trying to create that rich, dark value. Now some things are going to get kind of messy here. That's not perfect. We will go back in and clean it up. Let yourself get a little bit messy. I know one of the biggest complaints about charcoal is that's hard to control. And it is. It is hard to control when you're laying down large shapes like this, but that's why you have your charcoal pencils and your eraser to go back in and very lightly sharpen some things up. Use your eraser like it's a drawing tool. Like you're going in there and redefining that outline just a little tiny bit. Now I usually prefer to use um, a rubber eraser as opposed to my um, kneaded here, but that's just what I've got at the moment. Pretty good. Clean my finger off slightly. And I feel like I feel like my shadow is just a little bit too too dark, so I'm actually going to take a tissue, and the tissue will kind of absorb some of that charcoal ever so slightly. You don't want to just go in there with your eraser and start erasing your shadows because your eraser will get very dirty very fast. It kind of sucks up all that charcoal and then keeps it inside of the eraser, and then your eraser won't work very well for other projects. So use a tissue. Just kind of blot it a little bit, maybe kind of soften up the edges slightly. There we go. I like that a little bit better. Okay, so now our shadow is a little bit darker. Now just to kind of show you my thought process here, remember that you have the occlusion shadow in addition to your whole cat shadow. The occlusion shadow is that really dark spot right underneath the form where the light does not meet. That's when you can go in there with your pencil. Once you're happy with your shadow as a whole, you can go in there and really start to darken up that little area underneath there. Now my shadow is already pretty dark, so I don't think it's going to get much darker unless I go in here. Yeah. So your block is going to be darker than your pencil. So if you really, really want something to be dark, you're going to have to go in there with your block compressed charcoal. Now my little bit of reflected light here is getting kind of dirty. So what we can do is take our white pencil and just clean up that little bit down there. Now I'm looking at my reference photo. I'm figuring out, does my reflected light go all the way around there? Not quite. So I'm going to go back in with my vine and pull that down a little bit. Pay attention to your shapes of your reference photo, ladies. That is really what's important for you here, especially in these early stages of learning about drawing from observation. You wanna look at your reference photo constantly. Constantly look back and forth at your drawing and your reference photo. Now I'm gonna to start to build this core shadow that I see in here, just a little bit darker. I'm actually gonna take my pencil and just kind of swirl it a little bit in the direction that my core shadow is going. It conforms to the contours of that sphere. And if you do this and don't just go from side to side, it'll help the implied form look more convincing, like it really is 3D. Yep, blend a little bit. There we go. I'm going to keep building on these mid-tones that I'm seeing here, taking my vine charcoal. Remember, if you're trying to do lighter values, you know, shadows still, but shadows that aren't so dark, use your vine charcoal. That's going to give you a much softer shadow. It's not so harsh like your compressed is. Like when I go in here and build up that core shadow even more, look at how dark that compressed charcoal is. You can't make your compressed charcoal lighter. 
but with your vine, you can get a pretty good range of values. There we go. I'm going to go in here and just kind of do a little pushing and pulling of my reflected light here, kind of smudging things out, trying to make things just a little bit softer. Like you're playing tug of war with the light values and the dark values, just pushing and pulling them back and forth together. Okay, I'm pretty happy with my sphere there. I'm going to go in there with my eraser. And I'm going to clean up this edge because it's just a little messy. Or if you got these edges that you got to clean up, you're not always going to use the charcoal pencils, the white and the black ones. Using your eraser, is a good way to make sure that you don't have outlines. You definitely don't want to have outlines in your final work because it it takes away from that illusion that this is 3D. We don't have outlines in real life. There we go. Just kind of blend out that little bit of eraser area just a little bit. And then I'm getting some charcoal on my border, so I'm just going to take a moment to clean it up. Clean up your border as you go along rather than doing it at the very end because if you wait until the end, you might not even be able to see your border anymore and not have an idea of where it is. Okay. See, I'm getting some things a little bit messy here. It's okay, just blend it out. Okay, so I've got one good area here, one good form that has some darkness, that nice dark core shadow here, the cast shadow the occlusion shadow underneath there. Remember, use things that you've got to clean things up. Okay. So you want to do this process for all of your forms. You know, wherever you've got a really, really dark area, that's where you're going to use your compressed charcoal. But do not just use it over the whole thing. Not everything is super dark in your reference photo. I'm going here with the tissue. Make it blend a little teeny tiny bit easier. You know, try different things. Try your finger, try a tissue. See what works better. But again, don't go too dark too fast. Look at your reference photo constantly. Pay attention to the shapes that you're seeing and how crisp the edges are. and then build your way up accordingly. And remember ladies, if you mess up, it's okay. Just smudge it out and rebuild it. Let all of your different charcoal types work together. Okay. And we're set for today. <laughs>